Welcome back to another Pi Game tutorial. Once again, I suggest you look at previous tutorials I've done because we're just adding on to the same uh, script we've been writing. This is what we've got so far. Two images of Tux, one moving across the screen and down. Let's have a look at our code. And uh, last time, when we were animating that, we create a variable called black, which is what we will fill our background with. And uh, the way this works is it's RGB, so red, green, and blue. So if I was to edit that first number, which is red, and I can set it up to anywhere from 0 to 255, run it again, you'll see now the background is kind of a red color. The higher that number, up to 255, the redder it will be. So now this is a pure red here at 255. If I wanted, I could uh, mix colors. So I can put this down to, we'll say 200. Whoops. We'll set this one to 255. So red's at 200. Green is at zero. So there's no green in this image, in this color. And the last number is blue, so 255 is as strong as blue as you can get. So it's going to mix the red and the blue, and we should get somewhat of a purple color. There we go. So now, uh, in this tutorial, we're going to add a if-then statement and some variables to make it so the color changes as the game goes on. Uh, I'm going to set this back to black for now. And you can see we're calling the fill color here. Although that's not necessary, you don't have to use a variable in that case. I'm going to just put the numbers directly into here. So in parentheses, within those parentheses, I'm going to do 0, comma, 0, comma, 0, close the brackets. And that will basically fill black just as we were before, but not using that variable. But within this, I am going to add a variable, add a variable r for the red. And we'll create that variable up here, because we have to create it before we call it. I'll set it to zero. Uh, so now if we were to run our code, it'll still just be a black background not changing. We can now add into our loop to increase the red of the background by doing r equals r plus one every loop, but the game will crash after a bit once r gets above 255 because it goes, hey, that's not a color, I can't do that. So now we're going to do an if-then statement, and basically once it hits 255, it's going to reverse, go back to black until it hits black or zero, and then move back up to 255 again. So we're going to say if r equals 255, then r1 equals negative 1 else, or actually we should do L if R equals zero, then R1 equals one. And then here, instead of saying plus one, we're going to add plus the variable R1. So variable R1 will equal either one or negative one. If it hits 255, it will become negative one. And if you add a negative number, you're basically subtracting. So R hits 255, then we start subtracting, moving back down. Once it hits 0, it starts moving back up. And if I typed everything right, that should work just fine. Well, let's run it now. There we go. Black, red, black, red. Perfect. So that's how you manipulate colors in this case a background color, in Pi Game. I hope you found this tutorial useful. I hope you visit filmsbychris.com. The link is in the description. They have plenty of videos and tutorials there to help you do open source media related stuff. Keep watching. I've got more Pi Game tutorials coming at you.